So I'm just putting this video out as a follow-up to my video yesterday about why I believe that there's proof in the chart of naked shorts or synthetic shares in AMC. Oh, really? Okay. Basically, it has to do with this indicator, uh, cumul cumulative delta volume. And as you can see on the indicator, there's not much divergence, even during large swings in price uh, for most of AMC's uh, lifetime in trading. Well, the scale is so skewed that you can't tell if there's divergences or not because of this large move here. So you'd have to scroll over and have the scale readjust so that you could see the contour of it. But we'll, we'll look past that. But that's already a red flag. And as soon as we get to the point where the squeeze or the mini squeeze back in January 2021, um, you can see a massive di divergence. Well, it looks more massive when you expand the scale and expand the pain like that, but, uh, <laughs> all right. Buying versus selling. As you can see, there's minimal buying pressure represented in what would be considered a, you know, 1500% move, which is pretty large, but in the cumulative Delta which I explained a little bit more in the other video. Uh, it's almost purely buying pressure to a degree that is uh, absolute. Buying pressure? I, I think he meant selling pressure since he said there's minimal buying pressure here, but um, okay. Absolutely insane. <laughs> so uh, we're looking at a 500% uh, more selling than buying represented on this chart, which is a massive divergence, which tells me that there's the possibility that the float of AMC is sold, you know, five times over. See, this is the danger of confirmation bias. It's the danger of assumptions that are taken as fact, um, because that's not what this indicates at all. I'll let him continue for a little bit, and then, uh, then we'll talk about what this really indicates. 5x, right? 500% of shares were created. Um, during this move. That's speculation. I'm not sure about that 100%. Of course, of course it is. What you're seeing here at AMC is something that you should never see, this divergence during a large uh, spike in price action. You should never see it, huh? Okay. All right. So let's just uh, get this out of the way here. So here's a brief explanation. Uh, delta refers to the net difference between buying and selling volume at each price level. Cumulative delta builds upon this concept by recording a cumulative tally of these differences in buying and selling volume. For traders using cum cumulative delta, limit orders are considered passive while market orders are considered aggressive. In other words, buying or at the ask or selling at the bid are considered aggressive since these orders will fill immediately. This implies a sense of urgency in the market. With that in mind, the cumulative delta calculation uses the following formula. Market buy orders minus market sell orders equals delta. When this result is a positive value, buyers are seen as more aggressive and vice versa. Cumulative Delta keeps a running tally, which displays a comprehensive historical and real-time view of order flow Delta activity. The Cumulative Delta indicator plots as candlesticks in a panel below the price at time information. One of the main uses of Cumulative Delta is to confirm or deny market trends. Okay, here's an example. In the example shown above, while the charted price data may suggest a bullish trend, the Cumulative Delta indicator featured in the bottom panel does not confirm the bias. So this is a divergence. It's a divergence here, okay? Uh, this one's about crypto, um, but it's it's the same indicator. The cumulative volume indicator can be used as a momentum slash trend indicator to determine if we're in a bull market or bear market and predict further price movements, okay? So and here it talks a little bit more. The cumulative volume indicator is not as important as the actual trend line. The CVD data had a lower number when Bitcoin hit an all-time high of $69,000 in November 2021 than it did at the previous all-time high of $65,000 in April. The indicator is only used to predict current trends in the crypto market. Okay, so this is important. Then this is a similar concept as on-balance volume in the sense that 
the actual number, the value of the on-balance volume indicator itself is not relevant. It does not tell you anything specific with that number, but rather it's the change in that number or the trend or the divergence or convergence with the price. That is what the indicator is designed to do. It's the same with this CVD indicator. So looking at the absolute value of it, saying, oh, it went from zero to minus 500 million, doesn't tell you that 500 million shares were created and sold fraudulently. Okay, so that's that's number one. Let's look at the chart here. So uh, here I have trading view with AMC. In the lower pane, I have the uh, cumulative volume delta indicator. I don't know if it's, it's not the same one that uh, Jay Douglas was using, uh, but it's the same indicator. So here's the area in question, right? January 2021, and we see this. Uh, he points out this minimal buying pressure here, and then this intense selling pressure here, which seems to be divergent from the price here. Okay. So one thing that I want to point out, and this is something that does not get mentioned often at all, but is of extreme importance and relevance in this situation. Okay. And that is, think about how many shares were added to the AMC float in 2021. And I'll do you one better. We can actually visualize that on the chart here with this common shares outstanding indicator that TradingView has. So let me zoom out just a little bit here so we can see the overall trend. So in September 2020, there were around 109 million shares outstanding in AMC. By the end of December, there were 224 million shares. So that's a more than doubling. And by the time March 2021 rolls around, there are over 450 million shares. So again, a doubling of the outstanding shares and it continued to rise. So what is this telling us? So when someone like Jay Douglas, who by the way is a new grifter, he's very new. Uh, he's only been at it for a couple days. So I figure we need to jump on this and squash it early. He is getting some traction with this nonsense. But when someone like this uh, speculates that the, the float was sold five times over, um, and then you consider the fact that AMC you know, basically quadrupled its shares in the same time period, um, you realize that this, this person is only looking at part of the picture. Hence, the danger of confirmation bias. So we can look at some media articles that came out around the time in January, February 2021 that confirm what we're talking about here. So so this article is from the 28th, and it says that AMC announced on Wednesday that it sold 63.3 million shares as part of its at-the-market equity program. The problem is that it pushed out the freshly printed shares on Monday at an average price of 481 a share. Monday, talking about Monday, January 25th, right here. And again, the absolute value of these numbers is irrelevant. It is not telling us how many shares were sold. It's telling us the difference between market buy orders and market sell orders, and that's different. So we can use it to get a sense of the trend. That's about it. So this is when the selling of, of those shares started. So this article is from February 2nd, and it talks about in the third quarter, AMC had an average of 107 million shares outstanding by the end of October. That had reached 137 million. And since then, so from the end of October 2020 to the beginning of February 2021, the company has sold about 260 million new shares to avoid bankruptcy, bringing its shares outstanding to approximately 400 million. So what we see here is a quarterly reporting here. So we don't know when in this quarter the shares were issued, but by the end of the first quarter, we see that AMC had 450 million shares. This article on February 2nd is saying that at that time, they had approximately 400 million. February 2nd, right here. And that's at the end of the period that Jay Douglas is concerned about. So again, in closing, we have a new grifter who has carelessly misinterpreted a technical analysis indicator to fit the AMC MOAS narrative. That's all that we have here. And as usual, it doesn't take much effort to debunk this nonsense. All you really need to do 
is look at the indicator from an objective standpoint. Consider what else was happening at the time. In this case, AMC quadrupled the shares outstanding. Put those things together and realize that Jay Douglas is misinterpreting an indicator. He's cherry picking data. He's ignoring the reality that AMC themselves added the shares. These aren't synthetic shares. These are the shares that AMC issued, plain and simple. So if you appreciate this type of evidence-based analysis, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, join my Telegram finance chat or Discord. The links are in the description to this video. Check out my live streams. I usually live stream about two to three times a week. Next live stream will be later this evening at 5 p.m. Eastern for the futures market opening. Hope to see you then. Have a good one. Catch you later.